Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. You are not supposed to judge a game by its cover. Actually, I don't know. That's actually not the real phrase. Usually, I do judge a game by its cover. Because um, this cover doesn't look nearly that exciting. The, but it's called Dice Safari. Everyone likes safaris. Everyone likes dice. Okay, that, neither Have one of those... Have you ever been on a safari? No. Well, I've been, know everybody likes one, then. Uh, well, I was just about to say, both those statements are false. Okay. 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 How about this? Lots of people like the idea of going on a safari, and lots of people like dice. I think it would be hot, sticky, a lot of bugs. I would go on it. All right. But anywho, Dice Safari is a light family style game in which you're rolling dice trying to collect tokens. In fact, let me just show it to you. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to take one of these cards and turn it over and look at the animal shape that it shows you. For example, this one shows a rhino. You're then going to take a bunch of tiles and make that shape uh, on the board. Or you can make an elephant. You can make a gorilla. Now, once you're done making your animal, what you're going to want to do is put it together nicely like that. Then you're going to take some tiles here that show different pictures of animals. And you're randomly going to place them uh, face up on all the different places where two tiles intersect. So you can see here, as these tiles intersect, I'm going to be putting different animals in between the tiles. And these animals are gorillas, lions, giraffes, and elephants, which are probably the most famous animals of safaris. What a player is going to be trying to do over this game is they're going to be trying to collect sets of these animal pictures to get points. All right, so the ones that you don't use are put away, but you can see there's quite a few out there already. Players are then going to get a handful of tokens of their color. And you can see they look like different safari vehicles and you're gonna take those. And then one player goes first and we're gonna go around. On a player's turn, they're going to take five dice, and then you play what I call Yahtzee rules, which means you roll the dice, and you can keep some of them, and you can roll again, and you can keep those, and roll again, and so on and so forth. When you roll, what you're trying to do is you're trying to put some of your tokens on the board in a straight line or in a box. Now, what that means is you can, for example, if I rolled a mountain and a red sun and a blue and another red sun, I would be able to put these my tokens on these four spots because I've made a box. I couldn't do this. That's an L. I could do a straight line. I have to do at least two. I cannot do just one, but I can do two, three, or four. When After I'm done doing that, any, let's say I put out these three here. Any tiles that are in between, I'm going to take those tiles. Those are now my tiles. If someone else has a tiles already there, let's say I roll uh, the plains, mountains, and then the desert, I can put down one, two, take this blue token off and put mine there. And then I would gain these two. Another benefit is this die here. It's the bonus die. If you put out exactly the number of tiles that it shows on this die, then you will get to put out a bonus one basically anywhere you want. Now this will continue until every tile here has somebody's piece on it. And at least everybody has had three turns. 
After that has happened, and there's a, one of these in everyone's property, uh, on all the different areas, the game is over. And then players are going to score points. You get one point for every one of your tokens out on the board. You get one point for every animal token, unless you have a set of three animal tokens, in which case that's worth five points, and each extra animal of that same type after that's worth three more points. Or if you have an animal of each kind, that makes a set and that's worth 10 points. You can only score each animal once, so you score them the way that gives you the most points. The person with the most points is the winner. You can make a new map. You can even design your own map. I was thinking about putting the Space Invader guy on. But you can do whatever you want and play another game and roll dice. Now, the components are great, but I want to point out here, if there's one, one that's not so great, and I don't know how hard it is to tell in this light, is the one die you can see here, the, it, this is a very orange color and it's brown. It's not a big deal, the shape is the same, but I did want to point that out. Uh, I'm glad they do have shapes on the dice because uh, it does help in low lighting or with people who have a hard time telling differences of color apart. And that's how you play it. I think taken for what this game is, it's quite good. When we first started playing it, when I went over the rules and we set it up, I was like, Really, that's all there is. Roll yeah. dice, hope you get a combo. But actually, there's some interesting strategic things that you can do. Although, again, I, I, I'm being very uh, generous with that word, strategic. But you can put, you know, depending on the board, are you going to try to get animals? Are you going to try to get the most things? Who are you going to take out of contention? You don't have a lot of choices, but deciding maybe to put out only two tiles so that you can get that bonus one, as opposed to three or four when you could put those out, there's a few choices that you have to make. And then there's that whole Yahtzee thing, which is very familiar to most people. So I really think that this is a game that if I had people over like, we don't really like that many board games, I could probably bring this out and I think they would play it. Yeah, probably so. If you like Yahtzee, you'd probably like this. Um, because that's pretty much all this is. It's themed Yahtzee. Well, but it takes out all the numbers. You're not yeah, Each time you're not yeah. trying to roll anything specific, you're trying to roll what's on the board. True. Yeah, which could be anywhere. I guess that's it's comparable to Yahtzee, but I felt I like the spatial aspect of the board. Okay. It's kind of like if you played Yahtzee with a grid and there was different numbers on the board. And, ooh, We've done that before. Have they? Yes. I remember playing a game that way. Maybe you're thinking of Sequence, where you played the cards and put them on the board. No. No, no. Oh, well, anyway. <laughs> that's, what that, that's what this would be like, then, with pictures. I, I really like it. Uh, I pointed out in my uh, description of the game already, it, some, there was a, a little color disparity between the orange and the, the tiles. But I don't think that matters too much over how to play the game. You just got to keep your eyes on the symbols rather yeah, than the colors. The symbol, yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, um, I really wanted to like this game, and I think I do, um, but again, it's not going to be one that I pull out a whole lot. There was another Safari-themed game that I would rather play with my kids more often, and I can't remember the name of it now. Um, came in the little small box thingy. Um, Botswana. I'd rather play Botswana. And, uh, well, I think they're different games. They but... are different games, but I mean, I'm, I'm just looking at the safari aspect here, uh, kind of a safari aspect over there. And whereas I like rolling dice here, um, I, I, I didn't like it as much. So what are you giving it? I'll give this two decapitated lions lying face down in the mud. Okay, so so neutral. Yes. I'm going to give it one thumbs up as long as you realize what you are um, getting into, that this is a family game and so that's who it's meant to be played with. Yeah. If I play with kids at night, that I think it's enjoyable. Like I said, the, the building of the maps is fun. The, the kids are going to get a kick out of it because it's very interactive. First, you get to build the map and the shape. You get to roll dice. You get to do things. And I think that that's going to appeal to quite a few people. And then yeah. there's a little bit more involved than was on the surface. Not a lot more, but enough to make the game fun. Okay. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com.